Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting out there in Las Vegas, no place to go, no place to work. And this week, in sync, I think, is Stephen, wake up. Hey. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hey. Good to be on your show, Howard. I mean, by the I, way, I, by the way, folks, what we just did was improv. I was improv, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We need the name of a singer. We need the name of a food, and way too much stage time. Thank yeah, you. yeah. But uh, what we did last week, we discussed this about you know the worst kind of comedy, and I, I, I was, I said it was improv. Yeah. Mainly because it just, it's, it's, and I, and I say this with great respect to all the people I know who do improv. What you do sucks. Okay. <laughs> Stop doing it. Get it, jobs. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, Stand up is the hardest thing in the world to do. There's a reason why. And it's interesting. Would you say that uh, uh, as a person, you have a low self-image? Uh, I used to. Not anymore. I think I'm a golden god now. Okay. But, you know, people who go into comedy have low self-esteem. Sure. Okay. Well, they do it. They have to be accepted by strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be accepted by strangers. Yeah. Yet they've gone into a business in which you go on a stage by yourself, uh -huh. you tell jokes <laughs> which nobody might, la which you might not get any laughs with. Uh, okay, really? and really? if you're really? dying, you're dying a thousand deaths by a thousand cuts. Yeah. <laughs> standing on stage with daggers looking at you. Sure. All right. Uh, that takes guts. Yeah, beats working. It doesn't take guts to do comedy with five other people. Exactly. That's not that's not stand up. That's because if work. if nobody's laughing, you got you got each other to console yourselves. Exactly. You know, you have them as protection. Or after the show is over, you got somebody else to blame. Exactly. It's the five people form a band. Yeah. Okay, learn some instruments. So form my 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 feeling was is as a, as a stand up comic, you, you you're standing up there dying alone. Oh yeah, sure. You know. That's sure. it. Nothing like killing alone and nothing like dying alone. Yeah, exactly. The best and the worst. Best for the best uh, and the worst really in the world. And uh, I, I, you know, that's why I never did comedy. I, I, you know, I mean, I finally got up on stage and hosted these shows yeah. and did 10 minutes, you know. Uh, and uh, I, I've learned to have 10 minutes, 15 minutes of material at one point. But, and it worked. But it worked in San Francisco because yeah. that was my audience. Those were my they fans. Yeah. So they knew Absolutely. me. So I was pre-sold. Yeah. So it didn't matter that I had to, you know, work to bring them into my world or, you know. So, uh, uh, but I, if I had to go to, like, you know, hell, Sacramento and do the same thing, I would uh, go. Oh, yeah. I can't do <laughs> they it. Gotta, they got to know you, baby. Here's the thing I never understood, okay? Uh, and, and, well, I understand it to a certain extent. We did like the Frost Amphitheater. You remember that show? We did sure. like Frost Amphitheater. Were you on that bill at all? I don't know. If I, I, been, I did a lot. So we did uh, yeah. Keystone Stone. Yeah, Keystone. We yeah. did a bunch of yeah. gang. Yeah. But, but, but the Frost Amphitheater was 9,000 people. Uh -huh. On a brutally hot day, I might add. Uh -huh. uh, but 9,000 people all sitting on a lawn watching comedy. I go out and hi, everybody. Yeah. And I go, go off. And... You know, then I started to think about it, and I went, I just stood up on a stage and looked out at 9,000 people, uh -huh. and in no way did it frighten me. Uh -huh. Now, <laughs> you change, is, is switch to another place, another time, Holy City Zoo. <laughs> place maybe on a good day held five people, okay? Yeah. <laughs> really, you know. Uh, you're, you're, the, the first row literally can put their feet on the stage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I went on that stage 
and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> wow. Beca and there were only like, there were maybe 10 people in the audience. Yeah, double pack crowd. And I went, how can I go out in front of 9,000 people and not be scared and then be scared by 10 people? I don't get that. And, That's, uh, uh, no, I, I think the reasoning was those 10 people could all jump on stage and throw me off. <laughs> they wouldn't. The 9,000 people are just this, this, they were like a mural. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. uh, very, two. very weird, very weird sensation. Yeah. So I always had, you know, people said, well, you know, you have the comics on. Do you like them? I said, I appreciate the hell out of them. Mm -hmm. I said, because they do this thing that is so uh, uh, fraught with failure. <laughs> and they go out there and what they're doing every night is trying not to fail. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, trying not to go down in flames. That's what we're trying to do. That's all we're trying to do. And how, how do you feel if you've gone down in flames? I'm sure you have because you oh, do. Oh, sure everybody has. Who hasn't? You know, uh, in the old days, it's a devastating feeling. Now I wouldn't give a shit. Well, I'll get them tomorrow. But uh, in the old days, yeah. You go up yeah. there and you bomb and, you know. <laughs> you, go <laughs> home, you go home depressed. Before. You go home depressed, right? Yeah, you go. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. So when you, so I always said that what I love about comics is it's the hardest job in the world. It's just excruciatingly difficult. Yeah. Well, it, it maybe the beginning. Later on, you keep doing it, and uh, you kill more than you not kill. So. And, and to people who wonder what I'm saying, you always see the end product. Uh -huh. You know, you see Stephen Pearl doing his act. Yuck! 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 <laughs> right? But you don't see Stephen Pearl. Preparing for this, going through, uh, what am I going to do for material? How am I? What am I? You know, and then you, you you don't see him fail. When he fails, that's a horrible, horrible feeling. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. as you spent years on stage, you learned ways of minimizing that failure. Sure, sure. You know, your kill ratio goes up, your dying ratio goes down, but still, it happens. He, Nobody's immune to it. I've seen. I saw Robin do something that got no. No uh, our response. He oh, needs work. Yeah, so I've seen I, well, I, you know, I, I had certain um, uh, reservations about Robin uh, because I felt that a lot of what he did was what I call word salad. Uh -huh. And it wasn't really funny, but he acted, he did a better, a better job of playing a comedian on stage than being uh -huh. one. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Kind of. You know, people would laugh because they figure, I got to laugh here. You know, he must be funny because I don't understand what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> but if you go to the Throckmorton Theater where he performed all the time and they were used to seeing him, they still loved him, but they were used to seeing him, he would do something that wouldn't get a laugh. Go, oh, and he's work. Oh, oh. You know, so it would happen. It still happened. To, you know, it's happened to, well, him. It happened to everybody. So, it, you know. I think that was good for him. You know, oh, yeah. that oh, keeps man. you. Yeah. And, yeah. and the fact that he went to the Throckmorton Theater, which doesn't seat a lot of people, oh, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, seems to, it, it gives me more respect for him. Yeah. You just like to go on. He because he went to the dangerous yeah. place to work out. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, the dangerous place was not the Johnny Carson show. No. It, it was not uh, uh, some big theater where people would pay. You know, if people pay $50 a ticket to get in, they're going to laugh harder than if they pay yes, five. Sir. Certainly, they're gonna force it if they have to. Yeah, Sunday. because they want to get their money's worth. Yeah, ha 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 ha! That was a great show. I don't remember what he did, but what I comedians it. do you like watching? Comedians do I like watching? Yeah. Oh, I like watching Robin. I like the uh, Pryor. I love Dangerfield. He's my favorite one-liner guy ever. Uh, I like watching Bruce Baum. I like watching. Uh, oh, now I'm running. <laughs> I'm running thin. I like a lot of people. One that always comes up whenever I ask that question is Bill Hicks. Carlin, I love Carlin big time too. The, the name that comes up a lot when I mention him, uh, yeah, when I ask this question, is Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks, like yeah. Bill Hicks was great. I like. I was in a movie with him. Now he's dirty as dozen many years ago. Oh really? Yep. You can get it on Amazon for like a nickel. <laughs> I'm in it. Bill Hicks is in it. Uh, Monty Hoffman, the rapist thief, is in it. Yeah. Uh, uh, who, uh, Why do we call him the rapist? Did he ever get arrested for rape? Uh, he, he, I, I heard he did it, and then the girl didn't press charges, and he was free, home free. It was the old days. I think it, with Monty Hoffman, I think if Monty Hoffman raped somebody, they wouldn't press charges because they didn't want anybody to know they fucked him. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. He was horrendous, but uh, he's well, dead now. We can say anything we want that's to about right. him. Oh, I told him this to his to his face, and he was him. a ma- he was a major asshole. He was the biggest asshole I ever met in my life, and I met some creeps. And yet we all hung out with him, right? Never, never, yeah. And yet you hung out with him, right? I had no choice. He was, somehow he like bullied his way into the comedy scene in San Francisco. Then he went to L.A. and he got good management, and they put him on TV, which showed me, like, okay, I, I'm not the crazy one here. Oh, no. Good management will get you business, will get sure. you work. Get I business. saw him on some major network TV show and went, how the fuck did Monty Hoffman get on national TV? I guess it's time for me to hang up my yeah, comedy face, shoes. Frog face manager Rick Messina behind him. So uh, Messina Rick got him Messina? TV. Messina, yes. Now, Messina famous. handled who? Uh, he handled Hoffman. He handled Tim Allen. He handled Drew Carey. He handled Janine Garoppolo. And Monty Hoffman. Well, I think I need a rapist. I, it, that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. It <laughs> doesn't know. make sense. Like Steve Martin, Robin Williams, Robert Klein, George Carlin, Monty Hoffman. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Wow. That's, that, 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 that's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. He just somehow uh, tricked his way well, into good Well, he, he died, you know. Thank and, God. And uh, his, his legend will go down in history. No. no. He, was, he was the man Will Rogers never met. That's what it y- was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gandhi would have kicked him in the balls, but I gotta tell you, uh, uh, who else was in that movie? Um, um, uh, who became? Oh, Chris Rock was in the Comedy's Dirty Dozen before he was anybody, and Tim Allen was in it. Comedy's Dirty Dozen. It's on Amazon. Comedy's Dirty Dozen. You can buy it. Yeah, I'm sure you can buy it. Like, well, I'm not gonna it. buy it. Okay, I'll send you one. <laughs> I got a warehouse full of them. Yeah. That whole composed. Well, I think that. maybe it be maybe for free on Amazon Prime now. Yeah, it's for probably on for nothing. Yeah, for nothing. yeah. yeah. I, uh, people who, who watch this show, you know, can watch you in that, and they can yeah. watch Bubbles in that thing they did with Bubbles and Johnny Steele and Will Durst. Oh, that thing, yeah. Durst used to be on the show too. So two out of three people in that film are uh, are here, uh, have been here, and and uh, and and so far as. Uh, Kravitz is concerned, he's just been in a, a lot of movies. Yeah, he's been in movies. You know, you can see him get killed by Clint Eastwood in a Dirty yeah. Harry film, and he was in Howard the Duck. <laughs> he was in Lady in Red, but he, then he got cut out of the film, so he's not in it. Yeah, but he, was a, he got cut out of Peggy Sue Got Married, but I think they paid him anyway. So. Was he in Peggy Sue Got Married? No, he, 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 he snip, 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 but he, he was he had a part in it. But they Oh, yeah, they continue to pay. Yeah. 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 He, well, Lady in Red, he's actually in the credits. Oh, really? And that's he nice. said any time it plays, which is not often, he gets a check on it. Oh, yeah. that's good. good for yeah. Him. yeah. But, good. I mean, you know, so I it's, it's nice to see you guys work. Uh, we were <laughs> at one time, so you know, still waiting for it to come back again. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Come to Sleazy Hack. Open this state. Tear down that wall. It's going to be a little while here. It's not going to be as fast as it was. It could have been faster. But, I mean, twelve hundred. Huh? But people got stupid. Yeah. You know, and uh, your your state has been affected only because you're living near states that are like yeah, exactly. infected. Uh, and. Um, it's it's uh, you know it, what's going to happen is it, the, once they open up the comedy clubs again it's going to be a different thing. Of course, it's going to be different, man. Like masks are six feet away, it's going to suck. It's gonna be it, well, if you know what happened, here's what happens: if we get an, uh, we get a vaccine, and that will get us back to normal. They can yeah. open up comedy clubs. I hear they're moving up, opening up movie theaters now, trying oh, to. I said, yeah, let's do something, but. Uh, what, you got to make a vaccine that works, you know. They're yeah. under pressure. A- a- AMC is opening up their movie theaters in Europe. Uh-huh. And Regal Theaters is trying to open up theaters everywhere except in states that won't let them open up, like New York. Uh-huh. So, it, it, you know, they, they're trying to open up. But, you know, to what to what purpose? I don't know. You know? People want, people want to be with people again. People want to work again. People want to, you know, they can't. Let's How just, long they stay in their houses and do nothing? It's, I know, but nothing. let's be serious about it. If we do this for about a month or two, I uh, know that sounds like a long time, we can eradicate it because the only way you eradicate it, the best protection yeah, sure. just stay, is stay not in. letting it spread. Uh, and you can stop the spread by wearing the mask, washing your hands, being a, uh, what's the word I used earlier? Citizen. Yeah. Citizen. And, and being a obsessive compulsive. 
There you go. <laughs> Basically, that's what I became. Oh, so I used to tell people I used to go I'd go out a little bit, and then I'd come home, wash my hands uh, for twenty <laughs> seconds, and then I go take a shower, and then I'd autoclave myself. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Anyway, oh, we've run out. Of, rinse, repeat, lather again, rinse we, again. We've run out of time with the very again. No, the, the time. The, the time the very talented away. Stephen Pearl, Thank who, you very much, who stayed in person. sync all all the time oh, this time. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thank you, Stephen. Stephen Pearl, you, ladies and gentlemen, give him a big round of applause, everybody. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I just oh, wanted great. you to get the feeling again, so you'll miss it a lot. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Stephen Pearl. Love having Stephen on. He's on with us about once a week. So, uh, you know, what the hell, you know. And I'm starting to work some other people into uh, our mix as well. But anyway, oh boy, uh, I don't know. I got to go to the dentist tomorrow. I, love, I, I do not love going to the dentist. Um, not because, I, you know, not for the normal reasons. Uh, I um, I don't know. I uh, The dentist I've got is very good, but maybe too good. I'm trying to get this mic so that it, it, uh, hmm, hmm. There we go. So it tightens up. There we go. Okay. Hey, hey, do you see that? Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, it's silly. Anyway, so I got to go to the dentist tomorrow. And I, you know, I, I don't know why I'm so uh, up and about, uh, about this whole going to the dentist tomorrow. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with the fact, let me wipe my eyes, because they're tearing today, because we got big pollen deposits. Um, uh I, I just, you know, it's like I went through the whole cancer thing, and it didn't bother me. I just said, ah, okay, I'll do what it is is what it is, and I'll get it taken care of, and hopefully on the other side I will live a nice long life, right? But going to the dentist, I go, oh, God, maybe she's going to have to do a root canal. Maybe it's going to cost me money. <laughs> you know, so. Well, I don't have the same kind of insurance for dental that you have for medical, you know. I mean, all the all the cancer stuff that I did, which cost about 110, was billed at 110 thousand uh, dollars. I think I paid two thousand dollars total. I think I would have to go back and look. Okay, but anyway, that's uh, that's the newest thing. Let me see here. We're open, but nobody seems to be calling me. So I'm I'm just gonna keep talking until I I'll bore you with all my. My health problems. See, I got uh, I got pollen count, count today. <laughs> Eyes have been tearing all day, uh, uh, and I'm trying to survive it. Anyway, we are okay. Okay, we have one person at least. Certainly, um, the uh, the not the one that we, you know, um, uh, people go. Oh, him. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I don't need that. See, I do all this wrong. I'm really, I'm losing it, folks. Ladies I, and gentlemen, sitting no, out there no, in no, Las no, Vegas, no, that's no place we to don't go, want no that either. And we want this, okay? Hey, there we go. Now, what, what is what is with me tonight? Jeez, I am terrible. Hold on a second. I got somebody for you. Here comes Robert Natali. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hey, hey how you guys doing? Yeah. You got electricity back? Yeah, actually, um, there are people in my rough area, maybe within 10 miles, that won't get it back until mid-next week. Wow. I figured, uh, you know, we were all contemplating that you had died, but I, 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 no. came, I, I you know, I came to the realization that you just probably just didn't have electricity because of the yeah, storm. No, that yeah, was well, it. I'll tell you and who also didn't have electricity because of the storm and still doesn't yeah. is my friend Shecky. Really? Wow. Yes. Uh, uh, he uh, he doesn't, and I wrote him back, and I said, "Look, if things are really terrible over there in Queens, you're always welcome to drive over here because he's got a car, and and come stay with us, you know. And you can charge your iPad and do all of that and do all the things you need to do." And he wrote me back and said, "I can't get out of the garage." 
He doesn't have a manual. Uh, I'm sure he does, but I think he was saying that to be humorous. I mean, so, hmm? so I'm 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 a little out of touch. Did they ever find that Lindbergh kid? Uh, yeah, they did. Oh. Uh, he, oh. he unfortunately he was dead. He was oh. dead. Jeez, yeah. that's too bad. Uh, they think uh, they think they know who did it though. So it's oh good, yeah. good, good. Although there's some question to that. These days. Oh, yes, there is. One of my favorite topics, actually. I, I love reading about that case. It's an interesting case. It was a strange case. Yeah. In which they, to this day now, they're beginning to believe that the guy who was, what was his name? I'm trying to remember his name. Hauptman. Uh, Bruno Richard Hauptman. Uh, that he didn't do it. Yeah. That he was. Oh, yeah, I believe that. That he was, uh, he was. Uh, uh, Boy, I can't. I can't come up with words anymore. What is wrong with me today? I think he was in a part of a group that tried to extort money from the Lindbergh family. Um, I've read just about everything I can get my hands on in yeah. the case. In fact, we live about five miles from the home where the kidnapping took place. Mm -hmm. Well, now here's a good question. Do you, since you've read about it. Yep. Who was the head of the uh, police, uh, the state troopers? Schwarzkopf's father. That's right. Grandfather, one of the other. No, father. Father. Schwarzkopf's okay. father. Yeah. 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 So, who knows? Who knows what the true story is, of what went on with the Lindbergh kidnapping, but yep. I, didn't, I never liked the kids, so, you know. Yeah, me neither. He, he little, never said anything good about you. You're a real brat. You did, did, you guys, did you guys see that thing on HBO about... Oh. Uh, the the, uh, the plot to the um, way you know was was based on the Philip Roth movie uh, book about it's called the plot to oh yeah yeah take, take over America yeah yeah that was about the Lindbergh thing you know uh, that was well Lindbergh was involved in that it was they didn't yeah. go into the kidnapping I don't no, not think so much. on it but Lindbergh is like really hot on Hitler and is yeah. close yeah. to Hitler and he becomes president of the United yeah. States yeah. yeah it's an alternate it's an alternate yeah, universe. It was, it was Excuse pretty me. Good. I liked it. Excuse me, folks, if I'm dabbing my eyes here and stuff, but it's really bad today for some reason. Uh, tomorrow, the pollen is supposed to be negligible because it's supposed to rain, you know. But anyway, yeah, I always, uh, that was quite a case. I mean, it, it uh, you know, uh, but, you know, he was a big Hitler guy. Uh, yes. Uh, Yep. Hey, uh, what do you mean it's supposed to rain? You know, the, the, the whole uh, uh, eastern seaboard is, uh, has got a storm. You didn't get any rain? No, we didn't get any rain today, but tomorrow oh. it's supposed to rain. Oh, okay. And I don't think it's a tropical storm. It's just supposed to rain. Please, uh, no. Huh? Please, Please no. Yeah, well, you know, we had this last week, and I, you know what I don't believe? Okay, so it was windy. Okay, I don't know how it was out near you. It was windy, and uh, there was some rain, a lot of rain. I mean, torrential rain coming down. But nothing more than you get every now and then. But this thing really, I mean, Jeff hasn't been able to call because he doesn't ha have power. Shecky doesn't have power over in Queens. It's been mm -hmm. since um, day before yesterday. How, how about Tony? To Tony's probably the same, huh? I would imagine. Hey, uh, Tony, you are you, you got your electricity back yet? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I think he's still sending text messages, you know, but he hadn't mentioned anything. But you about see, you it. can do that if you've got like a phone. Yeah, you, but, you don't you have know, to use your Wi Fi. You can just use your, your cell service to send yeah. texts. You don't, you don't think that uh, he would have said something? But your phone runs out of power at he a certain never point. It. Well, I, I mean, that was, that was a problem with Shecky. He wanted to come to, to New York City to come here to charge his phone and his iPad. You know, and he's always, he, oh, here comes Tony. Okay, let's see here. Let's, we'll find out. We've, we'll get our answer. Um, uh, uh, Tony, um, hello there. I never lost it. You never lost power. You want to laugh at something, Alex? What? Polish guy down the block, and this is not meant to be a Polish joke. This guy's not that bright. The whole tree fell down near his house. He's out there. Like, if he comes out with the chainsaw, and he's breaking the branches. He's under the fucking tree that's dangling. My brother's like, is this stupid? It's dangling from wires? Like, the, the half of the, like, a quarter of the tree fell down, so he comes out. It's a reason to get the hacksaw or the, you know, the chainsaw, and yeah. he's sitting there breaking them up and putting them in a bag for the sanitation. 
But Alex, the tree that's right over him, that the branches fell down, he's standing on the fucking thing. I mean, my brother from the, in the window says, is he stupid? Walter, you're dumb. I mean, get away from the fucking tree, Rio. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know how, but half the block going up to Grand Avenue lost all their TV. Wow. Well, yeah. you know, here, here's Shecky always likes to brag to me. You know, I'm getting through this uh, COVID virus <laughs> quarantine just fine because I got all these movies to watch. I've got this whole supply of movies. I just sit here and watch yeah. my movies over and over. You know, whatever. Try that yeah, right yeah. now. I know. I didn't <laughs> you know. with no computer. I'm the only thing computer. is, is that he is a voracious reader, so he's yeah. probably got books. It's just a little problem. Come nighttime, you need light. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I computer you oh, know. Shit. Yeah. And what do you do for food? You got you to gotta make sure your phone's charged because I'd be ordering takeout. Well, uh, has, has the takeout uh, cooked the food if they're out of uh, electricity too? Well, you got to hope that the area. Well, not it's certain blocks I notice around by me they clear out. Like half my block is the cable. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like our, our yes. takeout places have generators, so. And, and I, th I think there was a problem. That's why last night I had uh, a low count of people watching the show, and then after the show was over. That it was an watch. amazingly high count of people who watched it last night. I mean, but larger than we ever have. And I think what happened was this was some of the people who didn't have electricity or had it intermittently who then got the program. Then it kind of seized up on them, so they signed back in, and that's why I got those high counts, but the low counts while the show was on. I mean, now we're doing just fine tonight, so I guess... People are getting back their power. Yes, Howard. How are oh, you? I thought you had your hand up. Here. No, I was just giving you the thumbs up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alex, you didn't Con Ed with the electricity. Hmm? What? You think Con Ed? Con Ed's going to have to give them power soon because how long can they go without it? Well, Con Ed doesn't care. You know, this sucks. Yeah. Hey, is Indian Point still running? I don't that? think so. That's the uh, nuclear I power plant. So. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it is anymore, and it's Native American. Uh, <laughs> you know, when point. I was a kid, we had a boat and we docked in Montrose, and it's right next to Indian Point. I think that's in Verplank. Native and, Native American Point. Yeah, and uh, uh, I I jump off the boat into the river, and the water was warm. But and there was a whole bunch of dead fish. <laughs> so I guess that's where the, the where the water would come back into the river. Well, that, now and we know where your prostate, prostate cancer, cancer came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really. Oh, real fucking polluted. <laughs> I know. You know, I put two and two together for all. Time. I just I'm just getting tired of being tired all the time. It's, I don't know. I, I, I just that at night, but then I get energy. Yet. You know what I noticed? I could sleep during the day when I'm more. This, when, like me and my mom are upstairs, yeah. but at night I can stay up all night now watching TV like a vampire. Like well, well this kind of gives me energy, but the only problem is when my eyes are burning, that makes you feel real tired. You know, I stay up all night. When I get off the show, you guys, I'm up to like three in the morning watching. I just, I'm sick and tired of this COVID virus. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of going. At, look, Marjorie took a subway mm -hmm. today. She went. She took a subway. I haven't wow. taken it. Next time I visit, Jackie, I'm gonna she take said it. it's I want it, okay. it's really clean. People are uh, stay, sit six feet away from each other. Everybody's got masks on, you know. She said it, was, it looked pretty safe. And then I looked at the statistics here in New York. We're back down under 1% of the, uh, I think it's 0.9% of all the people tested came out positive, and we only had three deaths. Um, yesterday, I feel, safe. I feel like we're having a little country. I mean, here, you know? it, it's almost like uh, who you know. It's it, it, we're doing a great job of it, and then our, our our mayor is trying to keep everybody from coming into New York. He's going. Anybody comes into New York through the tunnels, I, they I get a little like piece of paper that says, "Where Go are your papers? So. No papers. Go quarantine I, yourself." I like the idea, though. Well, I mean, I know they're going to try to make them think a little. Oh, I think they should have been doing this years ago. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, the worst thing about New York City are the tourists, for crying out loud. We hated the tourists, remember? Huh? You hated it when they, what they did to 42nd Street, remember? It is bad down there. Well, the 42nd Street, they turned it in from it being, being sex. I liked it when it was sex shops. 
okay? It was Wait, filthy, you... it was dirty, and they had sex shops, but all the evils of America were on display on 42nd Street. And it, 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 there was something about it. Am I right or am I wrong, Robert? But there was something about it that was, was interesting. Outdoor mall. Yeah, and then fucking Giuliani comes along and decides he's going to create a situation that um, uh, uh, he, he's going to create a situation where he's going to clean it up. So he cleans it up, and it, it's it's clean. Oh, it's hey, it's, it, it's Adrian feel- Neary. We don't even have to deal with Brian tonight. How you doing, Adrian? <laughs> and she's yeah. got her name on her uh, on her square. Yeah, she's got her name. See, folks, see, it says Adrian Neary. Yeah. <laughs> so what, uh, Cuomo uh, is saying you that. Want to talk he, about black pink? What? Oh, yeah. Strawberry. What is that? The strawberry. Strawberry. Oh, really? Strawberry. You know, it's like a frozen strawberry. Strawberries. Wait, wait, do you have some for me? <laughs> Don't give him any. He doesn't deserve it. He's a socialist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, watermelon. Yeah. It's watermelon. Is what it is. Jolly Ranchers. Boy, I'm, oh, I'm hungry. I, I, yeah, me too. I'm jealous. <laughs> hey, if you go back to New York, uh, Cuomo will take you to dinner and buy you a drink. What? That's what he said today. He says, uh, "Hey, you know, you're sitting at that house in the Hamptons. You, you, you know, you went to Connecticut. You're in Greenwich. Come on back to New York because what's happening is, is the people that pay taxes uh, are leaving New York in droves, and so the tax base is dropping. And so Cuomo said." Uh, well, you know, come on back to New York. You know, I'll buy you a drink. I'll make you dinner. Come on. Did he yeah. say that? Yeah, he did say that's that. That's funny. That's was it tongue-in-cheek, though? Or no? Gee, well, who, who would have thought uh, an actual leader with a sense of humor? Mm-hmm. You know? We watch, we watch him for the... We, we, watch him, we watch him for the laughs, and then we watch Trump for the laughs. Mm-hmm. Different kind of laughs. He went yeah, off the right. page, Trump. What? Trump went off today. I heard my sister said he was saying how Biden's gonna betray God or something. Oh like yeah, that. like 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 he, like, he, like he knows from God. The man yeah. who holds the Bible upside down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is your God fearing man. And he said Thailand. We're going to Thailand. 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 Yes. And then he he corrected himself a couple words after, but he said Thailand and Vietnam. Well, that's right next Whoa. to Yosemite. <laughs> like he was on butthead. I over that. I watched the clip on that over and over. He's I, I laughed. He's from Queens. If you've he heard, talks like me, but I'm not a Tony talk. Yeah, you know, it's just a little more refined accent. That's all. <laughs> what about that? He uh, he wants the kickback for the TikTok deal. That's his video. Yeah, he wants a kickback <laughs> for the TikTok deal. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to play to pay. Pay to play. Uh-huh. Make it happen. I don't yeah. believe this guy. Well, I mean, it, 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 you know, it's it's uh, we can we we can get to him eventually or now. Yeah. I don't care. He's going to come up anyway tonight, right? Does he? Who oh, is my question? Sure. Wait, wait, yes, first Tony and then uh, John. Yes. And I don't want to sound like a sexist or anything like that, but the only thing that scares me, if he does pick a female, is it going to go over like a lead balloon? Why? I don't think the country's ready for it. Oh, sure. I mean, sure, I don't sure. Hey, look, it, look, look, Tony. But I think middle America t- might. Tony. Tony, I think it's you. Yeah, it's you. It's not because, me. because look, look at other countries in the world. I mean, you have, we've, they've had female leaders for years. You know, so it's about time for us. To, I mean, we're just talking about vice president anyway. You know. Let's face it, women run most homes. Why not let them run the White House? Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Bill. Yeah. Are you a NRA member? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Oh. I, um, I bought a lifetime membership that you uh, I have. I pay $100 a year. Mm-hmm. And in 15 years, I, I will get the card that says lifetime membership. Hey. Uh, Oh really? Yeah. And and after you spend that much money, how many trips is L- Wayne Lapierre going to take to Tahiti? 
Well, <laughs> you know, you got to you got to support the things you believe in. That's all. Well, yeah. but you're not supporting yeah. the thing you believed in because it turns out now they were crooks. They were stealing money. Well, Wayne LaPierre got a wardrobe and a, and a, and a bunch of other stuff and expensive stuff. Nice, they nice suits. 65 nice million suits. bucks off of them. <laughs> yeah, 65 uh, million bucks. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe my hundred dollars a year, I get one of those suits. You know? A tie. Think let's, you start, a tie. let's start when, when, when the NRA is abolished, let's start another gun well, rights. Look, I, I have nothing against the NRA buying Wayne, Wayne LaPierre suits to wear in public and for speeches and things like that. Uh, just like if you were on Broadway, they would give you costumes to wear. That I understand. But taking trips uh, to foreign countries at a cost of, what was it, how many millions of dollars in trips? 65 million. Really? Did you see that yacht, that fucking yacht they had? <laughs> it was unbelievable. Uh, who was the guy that uh, uh, played Moses that was there? Charlton uh, Heston. Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. See, he died, and the place goes to pot. Yep. But, uh, you know, well, the NRA does a lot of good stuff, plus I get the magazine four yeah. times a year. Hey. <coughs> I have a cough now. I read that right after I read Field and Stream, actually. <laughs> uh, not Boy's Life? No, I, I gave that one up about five Hold years on a ago. Second. I got to find my cough drops. <laughs> you, you give it to your dentist. Yeah, that and highlights. Well, actually. I don't have it highlights. Yeah. Highlights. Who not stole voice. my cough drops? Not high times. Life was Boy Scouts. Yeah. Son yeah. Of a bitch. Oh, well. Hey, I Phil. Up, how you, you know. feeling? I, I, uh, uh, did I'm she, cool. did she better take? today. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, good. What? Yeah, I uh, no, I'm feeling a lot better today. Although, I I had a bear claw. I bought bear claws for from this really good um, uh, uh, bakery yeah. for everybody at the store, and uh, my sugar was all out of whack today. So that's the last time I do that. I hope. Yeah, maybe just eat half of one or a quarter of one. It's hard. <laughs> I, just, I don't want to cough Howard, in here. Howard, you, so, you know that donut, famous donut place in Maui? It's like Krispy Kremes. No, no, no. It's not a chain. It's like a, oh, Malasadas. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to that place when I was in Maui. So awesome. I, I don't know why. I, I think I read something about it on the internet. I said, "Oh, we got to go check it out." <laughs> it was good. Good, good donuts. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. It gets the GapNet seal of approval. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, to, oh, by the way, the uh, it turns out now the governor of um, of Ohio, Devane, De, DeWine, 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 uh, tested positive for COVID, and then just a couple hours ago they gave him another test, and he p yeah. tested not positive, for negative, COVID. right? So my question is, which one counts? Yeah, which is yeah. the phony test? You probably, you probably have to do one more. Yeah. Yeah. Give them Brian's yeah, test. Flip a coin. Because there is, there are false positives, right, Brian? This is not uncommon. Not with his stuff. Abbott, is it Abbott's 15 minute? They have like 40% false positives or false negatives. Wow. Oh, and he yeah. was probably taking the quick one. Huh? But everybody wants, yeah, everybody wants 15 minutes. It's stupid. <laughs> so, Holy shit. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, that is huge. Well, that's we'll, almost that's almost worthless. Well, why would they do yeah. it then? Because I mean, you know, you get it, and then all of a sudden you panic. Oh my God, I've got COVID, and then you take it again, and you get it back in fifteen minutes, and they go, Oh, I don't have COVID, and now they go, Well, which one's right? Unless it goes to a lab, and then you get it back sixteen days later. Well, that's worse. Yeah. That doesn't have to happen, because like here in New York, what the what the governor did was he got local labs to do the work so that they didn't it didn't have to go out of state to be processed and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, when I yeah. went to get my colonoscopy in NYU, yeah. they take it on, they took it on Monday and they, they put it right into the hospital. They do it themselves. Where did they where did they stick it? Up your ass? Well I went up the nose. <laughs> huh? I went I had the nose off. I know, I know. I'm kidding. Because oh, you had the colon nose with a rubber hose. Yeah. Hey Alex. Yes. You know how I told you the numbers were up in Hawaii? The other day it was 250 in one day. Mm -hmm. 
Next day, a hundred and some odd. Yeah. Now we're all on lockdown. No we, inner island starting the eleventh. No more inner island. Why so, do they wait? Yeah. Well, why do they wait? Was, they always do they, that. They shut lockdown it down started. and then they and they just recently opened it up and then. What happens is people are coming from the mainland and they're getting all over Oahu. But if somebody from Oahu was to come to Maui, we'd get a spread. So now they're not letting the people from Oahu to come to Maui, Kauai, Big Island. After the weekend. Let everybody do whatever they want the yeah, weekend. Well, then right, right, right. Yeah. Well, the reason why is I think it takes time for them to communicate to the airlines and start canceling airlines and, and, and maybe put together the program to, to track everybody again. So what was happening was is people were supposed to be in a 14 day quarantine and the deal is you have to quarantine or leave. People figured out a loophole. They went in her island and then all of a sudden no more quarantine. Oh. So that's why they're shutting down the inner island. Mm -hmm. People were finding a work. Well, we were talking the other day about islands being significant in that things can get stuck on them. So that if you get, like, for instance, they've always quarantined dogs when they come over because you get uh, uh, rabies. rabies and then it can just spread on an island because you're, 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 it's got nowhere to go, right? I think that's part of the problem we had here in Manhattan. I mean, New York City was especially hit by this, but we're an island, you know? And so it, it had nowhere to spread, you know? So um, close to the Bronx. Yeah, but we're really we're really happy with the way it's turned out. We may actually wind up opening our schools uh, because the governor uh, the governor has said that if the percentages stay as low as they are of the infection rate, which is now at point nine, it usually sometimes goes to like one point two, but you know it it pretty well fluctuates around one. He says if it's that low. By the time they want to open the schools, they might take a chance on opening the schools. And what I think they should do is let the parent make the decision. Do they want to take classes at home or do they want to send their kids to school? But even that's fraught with its own problems. Listen, I worked in a, in a school district where the population was poor. It, it, it was actually a town I grew up in where we were lower middle class when I grew up and it mm -hmm. got progressively poorer because it's close to um ports of entry it's not far it's it's cheaper alternative to new york city right in any case uh i worked in this school district and and there's no there's no earthly way they can consider opening schools for a myriad of reasons in towns such as that mm -hmm. first of all they don't have the physical plants that would allow for the kind of social distancing that they're calling for You'd be shocked at the number of kids who don't have internet access as it is. Right. Um, in fact, uh, two of the buildings that I worked in out of, I guess, 11 buildings didn't even have gymnasiums. So the idea of where they had 30 kids to a class in many cases mm -hmm. of suddenly be, being able to magically create this social distancing, it, it's, it's just a pipe dream. Hey, Robert. Yes, sure. Uh, what would happen if they had like uh, an AM uh, group and a, and a PM group? or an Bill, they've, done, they've actually done that in the past for reasons of overcrowding. In fact, my wife attended the rival high school that I went to, and they went AM and PM sessions of sorts. In fact, at one point, I was in charge of scheduling the two high schools in my community. And so the AM and PM is already in place for reasons of overcrowding. Mm -hmm. And it's not as if the community can suddenly come up with money. I mean, there's talk about leasing um, other buildings, uh, warehouse space, this sort of thing, that th those things are just not, it's not capable of getting done. Yeah, I, I so, got, we went for a uh, school, school clothes shopping already. <laughs> there you go, you did well. Yeah, she fit in it just fine. She has a little room to grow on the top too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my question is, I mean, part of the problem that you've got with schools opening up is kids, their socialization is, it does not include social distancing. And how you tell a kid, say, 
Adrian's age. Hey, right. social That's distance. That's a tough sell. Yeah, my God. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah, you especially know, that age. Those girls are hugging and oh, kissing yeah. and running it's, around together. Now, and, if you are, say, in New York State, where the infection rate is under 1%, or 1% of all the people that take the test come out positive, you've got a fairly good chance that the kids aren't going to get it, you know. But all it takes is one kid, yeah. you know, and then you've Robert, infected the whole class. You worked yeah. in a school system that uh, was uh, probably challenged. Yes. Uh, is there any truth to the thing that if the kids continue to stay home, uh, the ones that are getting abused, there that's not getting reported, uh, the kids aren't getting hot meals and... Uh, and sometimes they say, and I don't know, but they say that the only hot meal they get is the one they get in school. Phil, yes, yes, and yes. Everything you've said is true in my experience. Um, 80 plus percent of the kids in the school district I worked in receive uh, free lunch because they fall under the national guidelines for um, being in the free lunch program. It's yeah. part of, it's all part of the uh, Department of Agriculture, actually. It's one of the ways in which the Department of Act Agriculture has used surplus foods uh, that farmers produce that, you know, if it goes to market, it lowers prices. I don't want to get into the economics, but you, I'm sure you understand. Um, so, yes, that's true. I worry terribly because I know many of my dear friends were child study team members social workers, child psychologists, that sort of thing. And they they know that, I mean, listen, I'll tell you one quick anecdote and it sort of answers your question. I was teaching history to eighth graders. And one day as I'm talking about Benjamin Franklin or some goddamn guy or other from the you know founding fathers, I'm looking down at the kid sitting in front of me, and what's clear is he has cigarette burns all up and down his arm. And Phil, it, it damn near broke my heart to the point of tears because I thought to myself, he's not really learning what I'm saying. He's here because with me, he's safe. You know, yeah. this is a haven for him. So you're absolutely right. The cases of child abuse, especially since a lot of fathers and mothers are unemployed and they're up against it financially, they take out their frustrations on, you know, whatever. They're maybe not as generous with their affection as you and I might be, you know. So, yeah, I worry like hell about that. So uh, it's an unanswerable situation, I think. Th this in is not cases. coming from a political bent, but does, oh, no. does, does that, uh, those programs outweigh uh, key, uh, the keeping the kids out of the schools. It's anybody's guess, but the point I'm making is that while you're right, um, the physical plant difficulty makes it such that I, for the life of me, having scheduled that stuff for years, for the life of me, I don't know. And mind you, this is one community, and New Jersey is fairly affluent as a state, this is one community. I could reel off the name of probably 15 such communities in New Jersey alone. And we're not talking about, you know, Appalachia. We're not talking about the, the boondocks here. We're talking about a relatively affluent state per capita. But there are still, you know, pockets of inner city situations where for the life of me, I don't know what and how they're going to do things. Well, you know, we so, have we have a we have several problems we have to deal with here to begin with we, first of all uh while kids are in school a parent especially single parent goes to work and the school kind of takes care of the kid for them yes. while they're at work okay yes. now because of this there's a double problem number one they can't go to school but secondly the parent can't go to work exactly you know, you know, and and then on top of that, in many cases, a lot of these students, it's the only place they get a decent meal all day. Yeah. You, you know, know, so we're, I, we have all kinds of problems to solve. Oh, sure. I was part of the negotiating team for my school district, um, mm -hmm. part of the, uh, the, the, we call it a union, but it really isn't legally a union. It can't be in New Jersey. It's an association. 
And I was part of a negotiating team at one point, and we made the following point. We asked the city officials, how much do you pay for a babysitter? Now, mind you, this is 20 plus years ago, and they answered $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, okay, let's do the math. $10 an hour, I see 25 kids an hour for seven hours a day. We did the math and being paid as a babysitter the average teacher could be paid $384,000 a year. And babysitters eat your food in your refrigerator. They're on the phone with their boyfriend. You know, we're charged and we're monitored to actually get something across to these kids. So, you know, it, uh, please. Yeah, but my, my, you know, my question is, long nerve. Can, why can't we maybe come up with some program that will take care of this problem. For instance, maybe we can find some older people who would be willing to be babysitters for these kids during the days while the parents go back to work. Older people are the ones that are most vulnerable. They're the most vulnerable. Well, they're Bill's the most right. vulnerable, but I'm saying that, you know, well, I don't know. They, okay, younger people, I don't know. Somebody start a program where people go in and take care of these kids who aren't going to school, but the parents would like to go back to work so that they can bring food, put food on the table. I, I mean, thought about that. You know, if you had, uh, let's say you got five parents and you got five days a week they're working. Uh -huh. One day a week, each parent takes the other kids and, and, they, uh, and they rotate it. And this way you can at least work four days a week. And uh, that's you know, being done. Yeah. Many communities are doing like little pods. That, that's a good idea. And parents, yeah. exactly as you point out. Yeah. Right, Brian? Yeah, so, you know, since the lockdown and everything, so we have the, we have four, you know, Adrian's four, 12 and 14. So during this time I've been leaving and I get off work about, you know, they're up for maybe three hours and I'm home yeah. usually most of the time. Uh, but now, so Wednesday, I'm off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they start school. All three of them start virtual school on Wednesday. So the two older ones are fine. They have their schedules, they have their codes and everything, so I'll be here for that. But also, Adrian's gonna have pre the pre-kindergarten. She's already advanced. They told her that they should be bumping her to kindergarten, but they can't because of her age, but she's learning, she already learns how to spell. She's very, very advanced for her age. So I'm gonna be here those three days to see how she's gonna log on. At least she's only with one teacher, but after those days, you know, I have to make sure the kids are actually logging her on. And I'm not going to be there to pay much attention unless I can get off work or maybe I'm going to shift my hours or maybe I will be working from home a lot more than I was before. Now, what's right. being done for kids who don't have computers? So, yeah, so they had technology. So, yeah, when, when we got materials, <clears throat> they had a survey about a month ago for technology and they asked detailed questions if you had Wi-Fi and if you had computer and all that stuff. So on that day, they actually gave out laptops and I read somewhere they're talking about hotspots. They didn't say like the buses like you guys are talking about, but they said some other kind of module or something for hotspots. So at least in this area, but this area is, you know, different than like the area Robert's talking because, about. Because I, as I, I say, I, I, how I, I saw something on CBS Sunday morning last week in yeah. which they did a thing about uh, internet service mm -hmm. and that still something like 40% uh, 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 of the country doesn't have internet service. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing like. amount. What do we do about those people? What do we do in those areas? Yeah, you know, this goes back to what you said a while ago, Alex. I don't remember you saying it, but I think you did. You're saying how the infrastructure for the cities, the major cities, they should really have free internet all they over. Well, yeah, but time. you're talking about cities. You know, we're talking about, uh, and, and believe it or not, we, we say, well, you know, the coronavirus is probably not affecting rural communities. But it's starting to. Uh, yeah, you know. A lot in California, it's the rural communities, the uh, farm workers that are uh, the highest uh, coronavirus infected. And those are some of the areas that don't have Internet service. So how do we then get the kids to school? Second of all, I, I taught I've taught every range from well, at one point I even taught as a, like a sub just to jump in an emergency. I taught kindergartners, but. For the most part, I was secondary, seventh grade through through senior in high school. Okay, so at one point in my life, I was teaching honors seniors. I could have done honors seniors by giving them research projects to do and basically just served as a mentor 
And these kids were highly motivated. They were all college bound. Some, in some cases, yeah. Ivy League college bound. And so all they really needed was me as a sort of, as a mentor, somebody they could bounce ideas off and I could steer them in certain directions. When you're talking about like seventh grade, let's say, uh, you know, simple English, yeah. that's a whole nother kettle of fish. You know, it's difficult to, to, cor to correct written work, let's say, without actually being in the kid's presence. And, you know, and, and it's yeah. it's different. It's yeah. very different. Yeah. What do you do when the first graders and forget about it? What I do don't you do know. When, I don't I see any do that. value. Robert, what do you do when the kid doesn't uh, English is a second language? That yeah. makes it all the more difficult. And frankly, in the town I worked with, that was a, a good portion of the population. And so that's just another you're you're pointing out something else. It's just another layer yeah. of complexity yeah, there, there, there is, is this are a, oddly languages. enough uh, you know we would say oh yeah we can do on online learning and that's a very easy nice answer but pulling it off in every situation is not necessarily possible you know yeah. um but we all learn online. I learn ninety percent of the stuff I learn on YouTube. So you know? do I. Well, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. But I'm saying that uh, you know we're we're talking about learning in school. Uh, what are they doing out in, out in Wisconsin, uh, Patrick? About schools opening up? Are they opening them up, or are they is it still a big? Um, it it's up in the air um, from a standpoint of. The governor is floating the idea, but not really floating the idea of keeping schools closed all the way through, um, what would it be, uh, uh, like Christmas break. Okay. And hoping that there will be online learning. Well, the problem is um you've got a number of the uh private school parochial school um those uh and a number of the suburban public schools where the parents have access to computers and the internet and and things like that so it's not really an issue there where it's an issue is in the um in the inner city where you've got parents that same issues that we're discussing here that somebody's got to go to work um and they don't have internet access and it because maybe they can't afford it or even if they have it they don't have computers or um they've got computers and they're outdated and one of the things that I, I'm kind of struggling with in my head is the Milwaukee public school system, um, and that's just for the county. They've had a number of referendums that have passed for building improvement, things like that. I'm wondering why they don't reallocate some of that money rather than updating whatever gym floor they need to yeah. this year right. to buy computers for the kids, you know, a Chromebook or whatever, something cheap, mm -hmm. you know, they don't need to be top of the line, but something so that all of the kids in all of the schools in the Milwaukee public school system have the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I, I, I'll tell you something right now. I, I know from experience here, Zoom doesn't take that much bandwidth it's really very uh, economic where bandwidth is concerned am i wrong about this anybody else not had that same experience no, it's true uh and and so i think that when you talk about chromebooks which are bottom of the barrel i mean they're basically they're they're a pad with a with a keyboard uh, uh we're, we're talking about something that's very possible and you're able to do the the, the learning but then the next step is you need the Wi-Fi or you need some kind of phone system that can take it, you know. So, wait a minute. America Howard has his hand up. What? Time to bring back those AOL CDs and mail them to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, Phil. 
Uh, I remember that they were closing schools because the population, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of school buildings. I don't, I don't remember how long ago it was. Maybe it was a while. But uh, they, uh, schools didn't have enough kids, and they were closing many of the facilities. I don't know what happened to these mm -hmm. facilities, but why couldn't they reopen them? I, I think that's region by region. Honestly, I used to be in charge of counting the numbers for 20 years in our community, and I would compare them to other communities in our state. And there wasn't a community in our state that over the past 20 years has had a decrease of any note. Yeah, yeah like, it was I San think it might Francisco. be region by region. Yeah, yeah, it was San Francisco that was okay. having Patrick that has his hand up and then uh, Tony. Yes, Patrick. Um, and getting back to what I was saying about reallocating fund for uh, the computers, it followed the internet issues. There are, and I understand that this would change things up a little bit, but this pandemic had changed everything anyway. Yeah. So what, what I would say to those in charge of the Milwaukee Public Schools would be buy the Chromebook, and for the kids that do not have internet access, there are enough neighborhood schools where you could have, let's say two or three teachers. And I, I know there wouldn't be hundreds of kids in those schools. It would be, you know, tens of dozens maybe. And there would be internet access for those. And for the ones that could stay home, they can stay home. And, and you know, I got, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Let me, let me float this by because this is a major problem we have here. It's probably the most singularly most vexing problem we have because everything else we can solve, just stay home, you know, things like that. But this is your kids going to school, learning, and so on. How do we get computers in the hands of these kids? And then how do we get them service? Here's, here's my plan. I think it's time that American companies started paying back some of the, some of the, um, uh, the, the lucre that they have uh, gotten off the American public. Uh, an I idea think, for Bill I, Gates. I, I, yeah, I, I think I Apple, I think Apple and Microsoft okay. with their, with their, uh, and the, Amazon. No, wait, and, wait, and, no, wait, and wait, wait, let me, let me, can, please, Phil, let me hmm. lay this plan out first. Um, that we have, um, uh, uh, now, now you threw me off. Uh, if the, these companies like Apple should suddenly say, okay, look at what I'm going to do. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to supply kids with iPads. We it may, may not be the current iPads. They may be refurbs. They may be whatever, but we're going to pay back now and, and get these things in the hands of kids. Then, so far as service is concerned, make sure these are iPads with phone access and let the phone companies start giving free service to the students so they can study. Didn't Apple donate yes. Apple yes. to schools yes. originally? We were that school. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they, did that to, that school. they did that to get kids hooked on Apple is yeah. what right. it really right. was. What's the difference? <laughs> well, the difference is now they've made that profit and they don't want to give it back. You know? We... We partnered, my, my uh, superior, who was also a, a dear friend, um, he went, reached out to Apple back in the mid 80s when Apple wasn't Apple, mm -hmm. if you follow, mm -hmm. where they were being laughed at as toys. Well, they decided to pick our community among several across the nation, not many. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they didn't give kids computers. What they set up in kids' homes were dumb terminals. So in other words, like in many places of business, you don't really have a computer on which you can surf the web, let's say. What you have is a dumb terminal, which in effect is a monitor being fed from some other source. It doesn't require internet access at that point. It requires a phone line of some kind. It requires maybe a VPN of some kind. This was being done in our community back in the late 80s. And I wonder if maybe there's a way that they can well, kind of reinstitute he, that. Here's, Apple he, but here, the here's the thing: I'm all of that. What I'm thinking of is that these should be computers that can go online, literally use a phone line, use the phone system. Okay. Um, what about cellular? 
Well, I'm talking about cellular. That they they attach onto a cellular system, and then we tell all these phone companies in the United States, hey, you know, to begin with, you are a public utility that's at our behest. You have to start giving out free service to students who need to do on online uh, studying. They can't use the iPad. They can't use it for something else like playing games or whatever. But you know, they they everybody then every kid could be hooked up. Because uh, cellular is pretty much in more places than it's not in this country now. You know, there are not as many dead spots as there used to be. This, this iPad mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is connected to cellular. It's got a keyboard that, you know, yeah, attached yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the point you're making? What do you mean, what's my point? I'm, what saying, I'm saying, we know that. that. An iPad can do it. An know? iPad can do it also. Uh, Chromebooks can do it, and uh, I think they're capable of wi wireless, uh, cellular, uh, and uh, what's the uh, what's the other company? Uh, uh, Samsung has them. You know, come on, step up to the plate, do something for this country. We are now in a bad that situation. That takes time. Huh? That's going to take an enormous. Don't underestimate the amount of time that's going to take. When we did it back in '86, I mean. There were times I would have to teach parents how to turn on a dumb terminal, and all it was yeah. was pressing one goddamn button. button. I had people trying to learn to use a mouse who literally, I'm not teasing these people, well, would put the mouse yeah. up the wall because they couldn't figure out how to maneuver it. You would be shocked, shocked at the lack of computer savvy yes that's but out there did you, but, plug but you would be surprised robert at the amount of computer savvy on the kids who are going to use it oh absolutely they would probably <laughs> you know. be your greatest ally in like, teaching i, I don't know i don't know adrian's capabilities but adrian knows how to run a computer doesn't she we had to take it. She started surfing butt or something like that on all these pictures. Yeah, yeah. We had to, we had to put the the YouTube uh, restraints to kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of parents who don't know how to use it and would have that problem. But there are kids today who just go, okay, I know how to do that. You know. What if they did something with the lottery? You all know? we I mean, have to do. This money. is very simple. How do we get service to the kids? And an iPad to the kids so they can do on, you know, at home schooling, uh, you know. So uh, th that's our, the, so our area is, but the other areas that really do need it. Yeah, I, yep. that's the hard part. But yeah. but what if they hooked up the lottery, you know, and maybe some of those winnings or some of the money going into the lotto would actually go to schools? That'd yeah. be awesome. Uh, hey, Howard, I'm, Howard, I'm, Howard, what did you say? Were, you had your hand up. You wanted to say something. Howard, you, mute. Howard, muted. Robert? You're muted, Howard. You're muted, Howard. No, he's not muted. Yeah, Hello, Howard. Howard. No, no, you're fine. No, not. You're muted. No, I'm not. But you know what? I lost my idea. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, then that... <laughs> Wasn't the lottery supposed to have money and, and yeah. all this stuff? I mean, yeah, Robert, I mean, all I'm saying it? is it's time a for a lot, lot of people. It, it, it's time for a lot of these people to come up to the plate who say that they're patriotic Americans and they want to help everybody. This is the one problem we've got that is the, I think, the major problem. Everything else is solvable. I mean, uh, if the Congress will get their act together, but, uh, you know, uh, but their people being out of work is a big problem, and hey. and a way of being able to get these kids their education, especially I'll tell you they were talking about in Texas, you're probably familiar with this Charlie, down near the border or down near the Gulf of Mexico or somewhere down there, there are communities that are basically Mexican, mm -hmm. and that they are right now at the highest risk for contagion. Uh, because they live in cramped quarters and so on and so forth. And the hospitals down there are being inundated with cases, more so than in Houston or Dallas or whatever. Those are the areas where I'm sure this is a problem as well. You know, how do we get education to those areas? Or are we going to deprive those kids of education because of their economic status? We can't do that, you know. And like... Like Phil was saying, the area that we're talking about, like where um, yeah. where Kevin lives around that area, 
is a lot of the the workers, you know, the working in the fields and everything, and they have kids, and that's going to hit them hard. They're yeah. trying to get their kids and, into and, school learning English. Am I right, Charlie, about this problem in Texas that they're having right yeah. now? Where yeah. is it? I can't yeah. remember Those where it was. They're calling in the refrigerated trucks too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd be so, willing to contribute myself because, um, from all accounts, I'm due a, a, a twenty dollar windfall about November. So we'll, we'll, see about really <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see about that. What I was thinking, oh, you Alex, mean, you mean what we're now what we're now starting to refer to as easy money? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hey, Alex, my idea was basically Congress should just pass something to allow it where they could either allow the parents write off or, you know, like let the kids get a iPad and just write it off their taxes. Yeah, but... You got to have somebody who pays enough taxes that that's worth it. I mean, we're, we're talking here. Yep. I'm not worried. Tax rebate? Believe me, I'm not worried about, you know, Brian's kid. He's got money. I'm not worried about, uh, 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 well, who else here has a kid? Nobody. That's about it. Your kids uh, are grown up. Your kids yeah, are grown up. Uh, you know, I'm not worried about those people as much as I am about those kids in, like, parts of Texas where they're, you know they're basically their farm uh, workers and uh, things like that and uh, they don't have the money and we got to get an education to them too we can't let because of your economic status i mean the idea behind the whole educational system in our country is economic status doesn't determine your education although in many ways it does yes mm -hmm. phil uh you know if apple would take all of those old ipads that can't get zoom anymore because the operating system is too old and allow the operating system to be updated those could be donated to kids that need uh need those there things. isn't a if i'm not mistaken and from what i know there isn't an ipad that was ever made that can't use zoom right now uh my uh, phase yeah. ipad i i was going to give her this one and get another one because uh i can't update it anymore well, it uh, isn't a matter I think of it was the original it. or one after the original. I, I I don't think it's a matter of updating. You know, no, no, no. It's not a matter of updating. Yeah, but they can they can still donate because Zoom is a pretty simple to begin with. Most people are not even using Zoom. Okay, they don't put it on their computer. They just go to that, you know, that that. Uh, click on that uh, uh, HT, you know, HTTP site, man, I'm can't, I can't think straight now. Um, and uh, uh, the link, there we go, a simple word, the link. They just click on the link and Zoom does all the heavy lifting. It's not a computer, it's not an iPad that does it. So I think that no matter what the age of the iPad, it should be able to use Zoom. She can't oh. download the Zoom. No, uh, you don't have to download the Zoom, Phil. Huh. If you, you know, my if, you, Pro if you didn't is... install if you didn't install Zoom at all on your iPad and you clicked on that link, it would take you to our show. Huh. But uh, once again, we're spending a lot of time and rightfully so having a great discussion about the physical tools necessary to get this done. What we're leaving out is the component about is teaching electronically for young, young, young children, you know, is it viable? Well, I'm not convinced, having been around first graders and kindergartners here and again, I'm not convinced that it's effective to teach. Can you get them to pay attention? Can you get them to pay attention to it? Well, My answer to you part. would be, and I'm not a parent, uh, and I don't, I can't say this with any authority, okay? But somehow I think kids today are so wedded to playing around with those iPads that that's actually the most effective way for them to learn because they're they're used to looking at it and interacting with it and, and so on. Uh, I think you're going from a standpoint, and I would be too, that, oh, hey, if I were a kid, I wouldn't be interested in spending several hours in front of the eye. But if, if the teacher were doing it right and teaching it right, I think it, it would be possible to, to do it. Yes, Patrick. Um, I mean, one of the things you're, you're forgetting is this is a brand new thing for teachers as well. Yes. I mean, 
even for young teachers yeah. just coming out of college, um, they weren't taught to teach virtually. So, you know, Alec, you're right in the sense that the kids, they can hop on an iPad, they can hop on a MacBook, and they know what they're doing, and they can this, that, and I the other. totally agree but with you. But it's the ability of a teacher to wrangle cats. And, you know, the thing is, you can have a kid at your attention as long as I'm talking to you, Alec, and I'm ignoring Robert, and I'm ignoring Tony and everybody else, so, Alex, here's what we're going to be doing. But as soon as I move over to Tony, is Alex going to be still interested in what's going on? Where in a classroom, and I'm not a teacher, but I, I have teachers in the family. In a classroom, mm -hmm. if you are not physically there and watching kids and being able to say, ah, Okay, so what we've got what we've got to do is we've got to encourage these teachers to become inventive, to take this new way of teaching. You're not in a classroom now. You're on a uh, you're on an iPad, and you're teaching all your students who you you see there through Zoom, and now you have to change the way in which you teach. You have to come up with new inventive ways of doing it, of of bending the medium, and and those who are not capable of doing that can be given some advice by people who do know how to bend it and how to play to that new medium. It's kind of like, you know, when I started doing the shows here, I had to adapt myself to doing the internet as opposed to doing radio. And I still really haven't. But it's a uh, difficult thing to do. It's, but, but you've got to do it. This is going to be the new paradigm. Yes, uh, Howard. What about like social skills and relationships and well, friendships? Well, that's how are you going to do that on an iPad? That, that, you're that, absolutely right. I mean, there are so many facets to education that it's really hard to cover everything. Okay. Like, and meals what? and seeing if they're abused. Okay. But, yeah. and, and getting that, beat that, up. That's a whole. That's or a beating whole, up on somebody it's else. A, it's a very important function, Phil, but it's a Holy whole shit. different <laughs> thing that we got to deal with. The point <laughs> is, I think that. Uh, that really we we've, we've got to figure out that you know that there's a whole new way that we've got to teach in this virtual classroom as well. But Charlie, do you have any opinion on this? You've been somewhat quiet tonight. Yeah, you know we homeschooled our kids for four years before we sent them to the public school, and uh, but the, the socialization is a big issue, and that's one of the main reasons that we went ahead and put them in public schools because you know. They were learning on their own. Let me ask you, though, how sociable are kids today? I mean, kids sit at home playing video games, and if they're playing with someone yeah. else, they're doing it online. It hasn't changed. It really hasn't right? changed. Your kids uh, must have friends, right? <laughs> yeah, the girl has all kinds of friends, and the boy has uh, Mohan, who lives right over there. They play games all day. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, okay. so they, they, they have their small you know small groups but the but girls very they're, very they're, active very social but they're having their social interaction even though there is a virus going on because you're pretty f f safe with these kids or do you have them wear masks they don't they haven't seen their friends they haven't seen their friends since the lockdown they actually saw a couple of their friends that walked by one time that's all yeah they we've been pretty much home oh really okay yeah okay now they ever kids go play online games? with them yeah, 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 yeah. They go online with them, the girl all the time, and the boy just to play games with his friends on there. But they're. I mean, would, yeah. every, would everyone agree with me that we're in a period of reinvention? Sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and they have a. I, I'll tell you one thing, and you know, again, this area compared to the area Robert's talking about are the two ends, probably. You know, and um, but they send out texts, they send out a phone call, and then they they refer those to the email. And the email, they've been updating every, I mean, on a weekly basis. And I'm getting them from three different kinds of schools because I have all three, you know, three junior high, the junior high, high end elementary school. And they have been very detailed. They have a new system called Canvas. That's another learning thing. They also have the infinite campus that we can see all their grades, all their stuff they turn in. Mm -hmm. So this area, I mean, you know, they're very, very good on the communication. So I'm very happy with it and I'm very confident. But yeah. Yeah, like like the areas that Robert's talking about, I have no idea how they're getting along. Patrick? Yeah, I mean, we've got, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't say 
it it's a majority here in Milwaukee, but I would say it's a good solid minority of parents that they may be either illiterate or I mean in the case of me when I was with my ex and I was working with her kid when they'd bring homework home. Mm-hmm. Shit, math had changed so much yeah. when I yeah. was in mm-hmm. school that I would useless with helping with that. I mean, I would still, history never changed, and I'm a history person, literature, writing, that sort of stuff. But when <laughs> it got into math, how the hell did I, I mean, have they, have they, they have, expect yeah, parents to know this have, stuff. have they changed the way math is being done now? Because yeah, I would imagine, I would imagine that you really have to teach a kid how to use a calculator, not how to do it in his mind and do up a row of numbers. The, they it, still have to show their work, though. Well, no, no, but what you you have uh, with math, what you have to do is to show somebody how to arrive at that conclusion. The process. What the yeah. process, and so, and if you eliminate the having to do a row of numbers, which I had to do, which I used to shake, and I, I could, it was terrible, it was terrorizing mm-hmm. to me. But if you can teach them how to use a calculator, then what, what the, the, to begin with. For a dollar, you can buy a calculator, for crying yeah. out loud. I you know. threw out my slide rule not too long ago. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I found it in a drawer. I never got as far as slide rule, okay? Yes, the, Robert. Part of, the problem, part of the problem is nobody dares ah. to tell a doctor how to do his business. No one ever dares to tell a lawyer how to do his business. But everybody on earth thinks they could be a teacher. And to be blunt... It's not as oh, easy no. as people think. No. It no. really isn't. A lot of, lot of the teaching out. that most non-teachers do are with captive audiences. You're teaching your son how to play baseball. Or you're teaching your nephew how to fish or whatever. It's different when you have kids who are reluctant to be where they are and you're trying to get right. a, an, you know, a difficult concept across to them it's far you're also you know you're also charged with doing something that's going to affect them for the rest of their lives exactly exactly you know it is probably there's more responsibility to that than almost any other profession going and on top of that when parents go oh well teachers are just teachers well you know they raise your kids for you for at least eight hours a day or six hours a day they're raising your kids you know When I was a senior in high school, uh, the last semester, they had me uh, doing a teacher's aide in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And these kids were like little miniature adults, you know, with with full personalities and the whole thing. (laughs) They had their own opinion about how things got done. I don't know how you really corral them, you know. <laughs> got one, it's not enough. Let's be honest, Bill. They were smarter than you were, uh, you know. But no, I mean, I just think being charged with uh, teaching kids is is an admirable thing, and uh, we uh, we we take it so for granted, and um, uh, you know. And now they've got an even rougher job. They've got to reinvent how they teach. Okay. And how to keep all those kids that are sitting there looking at an iPad interested. Maybe. I was going to tell you, hmm? my sister, I messaged her, Alex, because she's a school teacher. Yeah. And she said that uh, for her school here yeah. in Queens, 20% of the parents are keeping their kids home. They allowed the school, the school to, they give you the offer that your kid, your kid could be homeschooled, you know, via remotely. Yeah. And 20% yeah. of them are doing it in her school. Oh, well. But I think- now. Union is pushing back, Alex. The teacher union is trying to say that if one person or two people in a school get COVID, mm-hmm. they want to uh, shut the school down for two weeks. It's up to Cuomo, I think. That could be wrong. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think that, you know, there are going to be a lot of things that have to be solved. I would not want to send my kid back to school in, say, Florida right now, okay. or Texas, Texas. <laughs> or California. Uh, by the way, uh, Florida just passed, what is it, 500,000? 500, 500,000, yep. Yep, and what is it in Texas? 
is 470, so we should be there in three or four days. Come yeah. on, You're Charlie. Right. Yeah, come on, don't let up the slack. <laughs> God, New York is just losing this whole race. Uh, yeah, anyway, we're over 50,000 ahead of y'all. This, this has been yeah, a fascinating. New York, they'll shoot them. Yeah, <laughs> fascinating. You take positive, you take them in the river. <laughs> That's Phil. Uh, th thank you, Phil. We appreciate it. Uh, always leave us with a really positive feeling. Uh, yes, <laughs> another uh, drive-by. Uh, good to have you back, Robert. Uh, Be back. We missed you. Uh, you. Uh, Willie. Oh boy. <laughs> John Larkin. Free Willie. Yeah. Uh, Free uh, Willie. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Thank you, um, Howard. Thank you, Tony. Gracias. And uh, uh, Adrian Neary, thank you so much for being here tonight. And, of course, we always love having Patrick joining us. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and we'll give a big wave goodbye back, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. By the way, another one we'll be assembling using Skype uh, uh, next with Jack Bishop and the intersection. In the meantime... I'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. We'll be back here at 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. And, uh, you know, as usual, if you see her, tell her I love her. And be safe out there and wear a goddamn mask, okay? Bye.